Before we do that, let's look at a less complex picture. Here I just have two pairs of intersecting lines with one angle that's 120 degrees. There's a couple of different ways to approach this. Uh, the first is I could use my knowledge about vertical angles. So this angle is vertical to this one or across from it. So I would know that that angle also has to be 120 degrees. Now to find the others, I would really need to know about supplementary angles. So if I look together, these two create a straight line. So I know that 120 plus that missing angle have to equal 180. So that would tell me that this missing angle is 60. Well, now I can use vertical angles again to fill in that this angle would have to be the same as this one. And therefore it would also be 60 degrees. So now let's add to that picture another line below it. So we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. I already went ahead and copied over our answers from above. If we look at this diagram closely, we see that we have our first group of angles right here. And it's the same as what we had above. Then we have this other group of angles down here. They look eerily similar to each other, and that's because they are. If I look, this angle here, which is in like the top left section of this diagram, is gonna be the same as the angle down here. So that would also be 120 degrees. Then I can either repeat the same process I did above by using a combination of vertical and supplementary angles, or I could keep matching up those locations, meaning this 60 degree angle in the bottom left hand corner is going to match up with this bottom left hand corner of also 60 degrees. I could use vertical angles or I could again match up the locations. So this 60 degree angle in the top right is going to match with this top right angle and also be 60 degrees. These matching up locations are called corresponding angles. Let's take a closer look. So in the past few lessons, we've been really focused on the type of angle pairs created when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. So here is another one of those diagrams that you've seen a lot of these past few days, and I have my angles labeled just one through eight. So where we started was kind of connecting to what we had been learning, which was supplementary or straight angles and vertical angles. There's a lot of different combinations here for each of those. So for supplementary or straight angles, I'm looking for two angles that are next to each other and form a straight line. So an example would be like angle one and angle two. But again, there's a lot of them, two and six, six and five, five and one. And then I could go over to that second group. For vertical angles, these are across from each other in intersecting lines. So one example would be angle one and angle six. So that was our first group. Then we moved on to the angle pairs like alternate interior, alternate exterior, same side interior, and same side exterior. For all of those, we talked about how those names really come from describing their locations. So alternate refers to which side of the transversal that they're on. And if you forget what a transversal is, it's that line that cuts through the parallel lines. So that would be this one that I'm highlighted in green here. So alternate means it's on one of each side of that. Interior means it's in between those parallel lines. So if I get out my lightsaber here, these would be the interiors and the exteriors would be here on the outside of those parallel lines. So just kind of quickly reviewing, alternate interior would be like two and seven, or the other option would be three and six. Alternate exterior would be like one and eight, or four and five. Same side interior would be something like two and three, or six and seven. And same side exterior would be like one and four, or five and eight. Then the newest one we learned was corresponding, and corresponding come from each group. So if I look, I have two groups of four angles here um, in my parallel lines cut by a transversal. So corresponding match up locations in one of each group. So if I look at angle one, it's in the top left of that group, and angle three is the other one in the top left. So those are corresponding to each other. Then I would have angle two and angle four, angle five and angle seven, 
And my last example would be angle six and angle eight. Today, what we're gonna look at is given each of these types uh, of angle pairs, what's the relationship between their angle measures? If I look at alternate interior angles, are those the same as each other? Are they different than each other? So that's the goal for today. So what we wanna to move to is trying to figure out what's going on with the angle measures. If I look at a pair of alternate exterior angles, for example, I need to know what's happening with those angle measures. Are they the same? Are they supplementary? What's happening? So one strategy that I use, and if you know me, this is not surprising at all, is I color code. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking for what angles are equal to each other. So I start with just one pair of vertical angles. Vertical angles I know are equal. So here I have angle one and angle six. I know those are the same. Then I move to, okay, well those match up with other angles that are also the same. So then I look for the corresponding angles. Angle one corresponds to three, angle six corresponds to eight. So I know that those would be in the same group. So what that tells me is that angle one, angle six, angle three, and angle eight are all the same. So let's say, for example, that angle one is 120 degrees. Automatically, I know from my colors that angle six would be 120, three would be 120, and eight would be 120, okay? Then it's your choice. Um, you can either get another color to help you with the other pairs, or you can stop there. I'm fancy, I'm gonna use two. So here, I know that angle two and five would be the same, but they're different from one and six, and those would correspond with angle four and seven. So four and seven would be the same as angle two and five. So again, just by colors and matching, I know that angle two, angle five, angle four, and angle seven would all be the same as each other, okay? So if I look at um, angle one and angle two, those are supplementary. So I know that angle two would have to be 60 degrees. Then I have that visual showing me which ones match up to two. So I can quickly say that angle five would be 60, angle four would be 60, and angle seven would be 60. So here's what we're gonna look at next. Using this information, can I quickly tell about alternate exterior angles or same side interior angles? And knowing quickly if those are congruent or if they're supplementary. Because if you look, that's the only combination we can have. Pick any two angles on here. They're either gonna be the same or they're gonna equal to 180. So our next goal is to figure out which one is which. So let's see if we can use the color coding to help us quickly identify if certain angle pairs are either congruent or supplementary. Let's first look at alternate exterior angles. So they're on one of each side of the transversal and on the outside of those parallel lines. Um, I could look at one and eight. Those are alternate exterior. And again, if I look at my color coding, they're the same color, which means they're the same angle measure. So that relationship would be congruent. If I also looked at the other pair of alternate exteriors, I have angle five and I have angle four, and I can see that those are also still congruent because I color coded them the same. So either pair of alternate exterior angles are congruent. Now let's switch to the inside. Alternate interior, so one on each side of the transversal, but this time in between those parallel lines. I have angle two and I have angle seven. Those are alternate interiors. They're the same color, so I know that they are congruent. My other pair of alternate interiors would be angle six and angle three. But again, those are also congruent to each other. So alternate interior and alternate exterior, both of those are always going to be congruent to each other. Next, look at, let's look at same side exterior. Oh, excuse me. So I would have angle one and angle four here. This time they're different colors. Angle one and angle four are different. One I highlighted blue, one I highlighted green. So since they're not congruent, that means they're supplementary. They're always either gonna be congruent or supplementary. So if they're not congruent, by default they have to be supplementary. 
Just to test, my other pair would be angle five and angle eight. Those are also different colors, so I know that those are also supplementary. My last kind are same side interior. So here I have angle two and angle three, both on the inside, both on the same side of the transversal. Those are different colors. So therefore I know that those are supplementary. Your other option would be angle six and angle seven. But again, different colors, also supplementary. So you can notice some patterns here. If they are alternate, they happen to be congruent. If they are same side, they happen to be supplementary. So today you're gonna to practice identifying angle pairs some more, and then this next layer of are they congruent or are they supplementary? If you feel like you're starting to understand this, you can probably stop the video here, but just in case I wanted to give you one other example, kind of from start to finish how I approach these. Okay, so the prompt is identify if the given angle pair is supplementary or congruent. Okay, and then it lists different pairs. So looking specifically at one and three, one and five, two and seven, and three and five. So one way you could do this is kind of reason through the whole thing. So looking at one and three and saying, okay, well, I know those make a straight line, so I know those are supplementary, so on and so forth. Um, I'm gonna show you the kind of quick way that I do it using color coding, and this time I'll show you only using one color, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm matching up angles that I know have to be equal. So starting with one and four, those are vertical, so those have to be the same. Then I know that the angles that match up in those locations, those corresponding angles, are also going to be equal. So that tells me that five and eight are in the same category. So if angle one is 120 degrees, all of those ones that I just highlighted are also going to be 120 degrees. Okay. So then for questions like this, all I have to look at is, well, are they the same color or are they not? So looking specifically at one and three, one is highlighted, but three is not. So since they are not both the same color, I know that they're not congruent, which means they have to be supplementary. All right, I'll keep going. Uh, angle one and angle five. So angle one is highlighted, angle five is also highlighted. Since they're both highlighted, I know that that means they are the same. So these would be congruent. Next up, angle two and angle seven. Angle two is not highlighted, but either is angle seven. Since they are the same, meaning they're both not highlighted, that means those are congruent to one another. And finally, angle three and angle five. So angle three is not, but angle five is. Since they are different from each other, I know that that means they are supplementary. So hopefully that kind of shows you how I use color coding to quickly help me decide if things are congruent or if they're similar. Both highlighted or both not highlighted means they're congruent if they have the same coding. If one is and one isn't, that means they're gonna be supplementary. Please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I think this is kind of tricky, so reach out if you need it.